Hi, I'm Ben Maven from AMP. And I'm here with Bevan Graham, AMP's Chief Economist, to discuss some goings on in the financial markets. Well, you caught it pretty early on election night in the US, and now I guess the world sort of is holding its breath and waiting as at least some of the Trumps get ready to move into the White House. Despite some early jitters, the market seemed to be acting pretty positively to some of his policy platforms. But I, I know that you like to worry. <laughs> so what are some of the things that we need to watch out for? Well, look, look you're right. I mean, mar markets took it actually quite well uh, in, in the end, as you know, sitting there watching it on the night and, and markets were, were reacting pretty, pretty violently. Um, but then um, I, I think what happened was markets were quite worried about um, Mr. Trump's supposed um, unpredictability. Sure. Um, and, but then, you know, during during the night, he came out and delivered quite a presidential speech, and and, and since then, he's he's backed off some of his um, more populist uh, policies uh, that might have caused the market some concern. Uh, and and look, I think markets learned a lesson from Brexit too, in that you know, immediately after Brexit, there was a pretty violent negative market reaction, only for markets to then recover you know, a couple of days later. So I think we saw a more mature response this time. And, and markets have focused on some of the more positive aspects uh, of, uh, of Mr. Trump's platform, and that is um, you know, uh, more, more fiscal spending, so a bit of fiscal stimulus, which, which, is, uh, which is good news, uh, tax reductions uh, for personal and, uh, and corporate uh, tax rates uh, look likely to come uh, to come down. Mm -hmm. uh, he's going to deregulate uh, some industries. So that's all. That's all good for growth and, and good for inflation. Uh, a couple of the things that we do need to worry about, and these are the things that will keep me sleepless at night, will be um, uh, he's very st quite staunchly anti globalisation, mm -hmm. anti free trade, and you know for, for the rest of the world, uh, you know that's a, that's a negative uh, for for growth and especially. Uh, for countries like New Zealand, where we are you know, export de dependent, uh, we want free trade. Uh, we wanted the TPP to go mm -hmm. through, mm -hmm. uh, which, uh, which it won't now. So, you know, th there are some good things there in terms of his policy platform, but there's certainly some things to, to watch out for also. Could we expect a trumpet here in New Zealand, um, or perhaps in other places, um, Italy this year, France and Germany next year? Well, there's certainly been some, um, you know, some some surprising election outcomes over the last, um, you know, the last uh, few months, and uh, there's other elections uh, coming up, as you say, um, you know, and, and I've given up trying to predict, <laughs> trying to predict election outcomes. It's been a tough year on uh, on that front. You know, Brexit was a surprise, Trump was a surprise, so I'm not ruling out other surprises. So, Bevan, with with the U.S. on a path of rising interest rates, particularly under Trump's uh, policies. And other central banks perhaps questioning the effectiveness of monetary policy. Do you think we're at the end of a low interest rate environment? Well, we certainly have seen a pretty pretty violent reaction, really, in interest rate markets to um, uh, to Mr. Trump's uh, victory uh, in in the U.S. And that is that that combination of um, pro growth policies that will inevitably lead to to higher inflation. And look, we've been arguing for some time now that um, around the world monetary policy was losing some of its um, effectiveness. Mm -hmm. you know, it had done pretty much all it could to sort of try and lift demand and, and create, uh, and create in inflation. So um, as we get into next year, you know, I think what we will be seeing is uh, the European Central Bank, for example, starting mm -hmm. to uh, pull back on or start to taper its um, asset purchase uh, program. I think it will probably go, continue going a bit longer uh, in Japan, but I think we're at the point in the cycle now uh, with inflation starting to rise uh, where you know, we, we won't see any new easing in monetary policy. It's mm -hmm. now just a question of uh, to what extent and how quickly uh, some of that stimulus gets, uh, gets removed. And I think you know, that is still quite some time away, especially in Europe and Japan. Right. So well, then what are some of the flow-on effects? I mean, what, what does that mean for us here in New Zealand? Well, it means that we're probably at the low point in our interest rate cycle um, also. Um, you know, the Reserve Bank cut uh, interest rates again in November, so we've now got the official cash rate at uh, 1.75. Um, but, but what we've really needed um, in New Zealand has been a lower exchange rate. A and what's been keeping our exchange rate elevated uh, is the fact that the US Federal Reserve hasn't been raising interest rates mm -hmm. and that the ECB and the Bank of Japan have been 
printing money. Now, if we start to see higher interest rates in America, which we're seeing, uh, we see some pullback in um, asset purchases from the ECB, mm -hmm. um, then you know, I think that just reinforces that we're at the lows in interest rates uh, and the next move uh, will probably be up. Having said that, I think that's still quite some time away. Given some of the um, current economic volatility that you've touched on and some of those challenges as well, um, can you talk about how um, 2017 is shaping up in terms of what that means for people like me, your average sort of Kiwi investor? Well, look, I, I think it's going to be um, a year of um, uh, mixed returns from the various asset classes. Mm -hmm. so, so with interest rates rising, you know, we're now looking at uh, relatively low returns coming through from fixed income uh, portfolios. Uh, but then on the equities um, side, uh, you know, I think uh, what we're going to see is uh, you know, monetary policy um, still reasonably stimulatory mm -hmm. um, around the world uh, and growth on average you know, picking up around the world also. So I think it's going to be a, you know, an OK year for equities. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to be a poor year for bonds, but that's why we have diversified sure. uh, portfolios. And again, it's important for, for investors to, to stay focused on those, you know, those long-term goals. You know, KiwiSaver is a long-term investment. Sure. Uh, so keep focused on the long-term. Make sure you're in the right portfolio for you uh, and uh, markets will do what they do. Thanks, Bevan, very much for your time. Much appreciated. My pleasure. Thank you everyone for watching and have a safe and happy holiday season from everyone at AMP.